Dear all, Dr. Vishal from Vishwa Medical Coaching and in this 10 minutes video we have taken an effort to make you revise the whole pharmacology. We have about 25 to 30 slides in this. Every slide includes the classification of the drug, mechanism of action, examples so that you can revise the whole pharmacology in this 10 minutes. That is what is our effort. You can contact us on our WhatsApp helpline number for any queries on 9930-788-955 as mentioned in the slides. So the first slide as you see in the picture is the hormonal contraceptives. Now understand these are the drugs we are going to use in case of uh, the contraception that is preventing the pregnancy. As you see in the slide it is oral as well as injectable. Oral drugs can be uncombined pills, phased pills, postcoital pills and injectables can also be having depometroxyperson acetate and all those things. You can take the screenshots so that you can revise what are the combined pills phased pills and all those things. We can also, the second slide we are going to learn about the alpha alternergic blocking agents. Now these are the drugs comes under autonomic nervous system so that which controls the autonomic activities like we have heart rate, blood pressure etc. We have the non-equilibrium type and equilibrium type some of the examples we can have for example ergot alkaloids, we can also have the miscellaneous drugs we can also have these are the drugs I'm going to use for controlling blood pressure you can also have the third slide you can have the 5 hydroxytryptamine antagonist now these are the serotonin antagonists we're going to learn now serotonin antagonists are, the, are those drugs we're going to use and again in case of the uh, serotonin excess in the body like for example we can have uh, psychiatric disorders we can have the allergic disorders in which we can use you can also have vomiting for example 5 HT3 blocking agents can be used against the vomiting you can also have adrenergic drugs now understand these are the drugs we are going to use in case of again autonomic nervous system drugs we are going to use like for example we have pressor regions which increases the blood pressure with few examples bronchodilators with few examples we are going to use in case of an asthma CN stimulants we are going to use in case of depression uterine relaxant we are going to use in case of preterm labors Cardiac stimulant we are going to use in case of cardiogenic shock. Nasal decongestant we are going to use in case of congestion in the nose etc. We can also have the androgen and related drugs. Now understand androgen are those drugs we are going to use. Those are the sex hormones. So we are going to use them in case of the natural. Uh, for example in case, in, uh, in case of increasing the muscle mass. We can use them in case of the uh, sexual disorders. We can have erectile dysfunctions we are going to use. So these are some of the examples of the androgen and related drugs. Remember it also increase in the bone healing etc. You can also have estrogen and related drugs. These are the drugs we are going to use in women to increase the endometrial thickness. We can also use in case when oral contraceptive pills. We can classify them like for example naturals and synthetic. You can also have anti-estrogen we are going to use in case of an infertility which decreases the estrogen levels in the blood so that the FSH level comes up so that the follicle generation is increased so we have these are the, some of the examples of the estrogen and related drugs so these are the drugs again very 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 commonly used called as an oral anti-diabetic drugs these are the drugs we are going to use in case of diabetes especially type 2 diabetes as we all know because of the receptor problems so here we have the bigunides, thiazolidinid ions, alpha glucosidase inhibitors insulin analogs you can also have certain other drugs sulfonylureas some of the drugs we are going to use in case of the oral hypoglycemic agents now these are the drugs I am going to use in case of a migraine we can have the ergot alkaloids because all of us know migraine is because of increase in the vasodilatation in the cerebral arteries so these are some of the drugs for example we have simple ergot alkaloids we can have NSAIDs we can have ergot alkaloids these are some of the drugs we are going to use in case of the headache like for example in case of migrainous headache especially we have certain drugs we are going to use in case of an autonomic nervous system cholinergic drugs we discussed some of the drugs before these are the drugs we are going to use ha to have a parasympathomimetic action to understand parasympathomimetic action is the action we require to decrease the heart rate to cause bronchospasm to cause Myotic that means for example to constrict the pupil etc. So, so let for example we have carbamates compound and accreting compounds some of the important uses. 
prostaglandins are also commonly used drugs we can have natural prostaglandins as well as prostaglandin analogs natural prostaglandins are commonly used for increase in the vasoconstriction we can also use in case of a smooth muscle contractions dynaprost prostacyclines we can also use prostaglandin analogs like for example carboprost misoprost latanoprost very commonly used to decrease the bleeding in case of postpartum hemorrhages we can also have autocoids and related drugs in fact in that autocoids are also part of the local hormones autocoids are those drugs we going to use in case of the uh, histaminic agonist as well as histaminic antagonist histamine leukotriene are also called as an autocoids because they act like an hormone but a local hormone like for example we can have histamine antagonist we can have highly selective non selective and we are going to use in case of an h1 blockers h2 blockers and h3 blockers we can also have anti rheumatoid drugs these are the drugs we are going to use in case of rheumatoid arthritis that remember it is an autoimmune disorder so we can use the uh, disease modifying agents we can use tnf modifiers we can also use steroids we can also use the disease modifying anti rheumatoid dmard as it is called and we can also have diseases or drugs for the gout in which uric acid is increased drugs for the cough understand cough we can have two types productive cough and non productive cough so in this case we can use, for the productive cough we going to use the expectorants and for the non productive cough we can use the cough suppressants remember we can also use mucolytic agents which will break down the mucus to produce and to and so that the mucus can be expectorated properly so these are the commonly used we can also have opioids which are cough suppressants beta adrenergic blocking drugs these are also an autonomic nervous system drugs understand beta blockers are commonly used in cardiology because very common indication for cardiology can be in hypertension can be and like for example you can see the cardio selective and non selectives cardio selective examples are metoprolol atenolol isoprolol ismolol as you see in the picture can also have beta adrenergic blocking drug for example we can have first generation second generation and third generation drugs progestins are those drugs we going to use in case of the progesterone supplements we going to use during the recurrent abortions you can use because of progesterone deficiency is one of the common cause so we can also have methoxyprogesterone acetate we can have mestrinol which can have dihydrosterone hydroxyprogesterone caproate these are the examples of the progesterone supplements can also use them anti progestins are used remember in case of an abortions we want to bring about an abortions right. the next is we have the corticosteroids again very 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 commonly used drugs for an autoimmune disorders corticosteroids are used whenever you require to reduce the immune response so in this case we are reducing the immune response with the help of these drugs can also have short acting intermittent acting and long acting as you see in the picture very commonly they are used in dermatology so we have topical agents also so that we can use them in against urticarias fungal infections etc these are the types of insulins remember very com because india is going to be the capital of diabetes so we going to have rapid acting short acting intermediate acting and long acting type of an insulins remember very commonly we use a combination of those because we want the immediate control as well as a long term control so we have certain preparations like for example short acting we have regular insulin called as soluble insulin lengthy insulin is an intermediate acting natural neutral protamine hegadon is an intermediate acting mm-hmm. remember that thyroid hormones very commonly used in case of an hypothyroidism and thyroid inhibitors are very commonly used in case of hyperthyroidism so we have the sulfonylurea sorry we have the propyl 5 uracil methimazole carbimazole we also have iodides and also we have radioactive iodine as is in the picture which can be used in case of an hyperthyroidism very commonly if it is a thyroid nodule we can also go for a surgery in that particular case in this particular picture we can have non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and it says very commonly it is called as remember that we have all of those are cox inhibitors cyclo oxygenase inhibitors so here we have acetyl salicylic acid we can have ibuprofen we can have diclofenac sodium we can have the aryl acetic acid derivatives we can also have the nemesolite type of derivatives we can also have non selective cox1 cox2 inhibitors remember those are all used in case of killing the pain reduces the fever 
and reducing the inflammation altogether another very commonly used in your practice the next slide it will be the important drugs like for example NSAIDs are very commonly used in a common practice all of you you can contact us on our whatsapp helpline number 9930 for any help we can also have drugs used for bronchial asthma in this case you can also have hormones and related drugs remember these are the drugs we are going to use in case of an hormone deficiency like for example anterior pituitary hormone deficiencies we can use anterior pituitary derivatives like for example growth hormone thyroxine hormone you can also have posterior pituitary hormone supplement like for example oxytocin as well as vasopressin remember those are used in case of deficiencies of all those hormones remember these are very commonly used drugs for the hormone deficiencies in your practice you can also have uterine stimulants and uterine relaxants remember uh, uterine stimulants are used for the uh, post dilated pregnancies where the contractions are less and uterine relaxants are used for preterm pregnancies when, the relax when you want to stop the relaxants stop the contractions so uterine stimulants are for example posterior pituitary derivatives and argot alkaloids prostaglandins and the other drugs uterine relaxants are adrenergic system calcium channel blockers